bulletin with television Tongan news. Making headlines, tropical depression affecting Fiji, expected to travel to Tonga. World Women's Day of Prayer highlighted the importance for women to possess a peaceful and forgiving heart and also to be patient. And Her Highness Princess Natofui Becca represented Tonga at a special dialogue with Australia's Minister of Foreign Affairs for Pacific Heads of Mission in Canberra. These are more stories together with news from around the region, sports, the latest weather forecast to follow later on in this bulletin. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalalaini Tonglava Paletua with the news for tonight. The tropical depression affecting Fiji is most likely to travel to Tonga. The Fuamotu Weather Forecasting Centre has issued strong wind warnings and a heavy rain advisory for all Tonga land areas. There's also an extreme high tide advisory enforced for all Tonga coastal waters. These depressions are associating with this tropical depression, the TD-15F, which lies over Fiji and is slowly moving north, northeast, at 12 km per hour. According to a senior forecaster from Met's office, Moleni Tuholoaki, when speaking on Radio Tonga earlier today, if the depression continues to move on its current track, it is likely it will develop into a tropical cyclone class 1 by Sunday. Meanwhile, the depression is likely to be located about 400 kilometers to the west of Ava'u. The depression will likely to form into a class 1 cyclone when it arrives in Nomuka or possibly in Nukalofa by tomorrow night. Also in the same awareness program on Radio Tonga 1, the director of the National Emergency Management Office on Nemo, Levin Aho, emphasized and reminded the public it is vital to be prepared, especially during the warning period. Both Mr. Aho and Mr. Tuholaki urged the people to stay tuned to Radio Tonga 1 for the latest uh, weather information as the Fuamotu Weather Forecasting Center will switch to tropical cyclone alert uh, by tomorrow. During today's World Women's Day of Prayer official program, women from different walks of life were urged to be patient and also to have a peaceful and forgiving heart. This was highlighted during today's national program to mark World Women's Day of Prayer in Nokalofa. Here's Anasil Falikaono with the details. Present as the guest of honor at the program was the patron of Women's Catholic League, Her Highness. Princess Salote Mafile Opilole Vutuita. Also present at the event was the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Tonga and Niue, Sone Patita by Nimafi. This year's international theme for World Women's Day of Praise, the streams in the desert. During the program, the Catholic Church's Vicar General, Father Itakolomatangi, shared words of encouragement from the book of John, verse 4, chapter 1 to 15. In his encouragement, he urged women to make peace and forgive others because today's reading focuses on being patient. Father Kolamatangi added, nowadays women are facing many social problems, but God will always be there to guide them. Attending today's special program are women from different walks of life and denominations here in Tongatapo. Meanwhile, some women who attended today's program spoke highly of the theme. The value and the dignity of women is important because there is no other place in the world that women are highly respected in but the women in Tonga. According to today's theme, the stream lives of the desert. Women should also know their responsibilities and to set good examples for their family and for their children also. I am pleased with today's theme because the earth represents the desert and us women are the streams in this world. We are hoping that our Lord would lead all living streams and for us to listen to God. I am very happy to be here today and to share with women here in Tonga the opportunity to be together and share the word today. The truth is we cannot explain how happy we are today. We are here to witness the value of women and what we have been preached today should be passed on to others. Today's official program was held at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of Mary in Maofanga. The World Women's Day of Prayer will be marked again on March 7th and programs organized for the next program will be held in all churches. Tonga's High Commissioner to Australia, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Angelica Latofuibekatukaho, 
representing the kingdom at a morning tea reception and an engaging dialogue on Australia's foreign policy interest in the Pacific region. Australia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honourable Julie Bishop and her Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade hosted the morning tea for the heads of mission from the Pacific Islands residing in Canberra. The other respective High Commissioners and representatives were from Fiji, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Samoa and the Solomon Islands. Here's Linda Filiai with that report. In a statement from Tonga's High Commission's office in Australia during the dialogue, the Foreign Minister highlighted that the Pacific Islands are Australia's partner of choice and this is the partnership endeavours to promote peace and prosperity. Out of all Pacific Islands representatives who were present at the meeting, Tonga was the only country that the Foreign Minister has not visited. Honourable bishops also pledged to Her Royal Highness Princess Lantu Fuipeka, Tonga is a priority destination for her forthcoming visit. Australia and Tonga enjoy close relations through Australia's support on its aid program, defence cooperation, police capacity building development, and that Australia is a major destination for Tongan seeking education, travel and businesses opportunities. Australia's aid program focuses on developing the public sector, advancing health and education services, and improving infrastructure. Tonga is the first Pacific Island country to send workers to Australia in 2008 under the Pacific Seasonal Worker Pilot Scheme. From July 1, 2012 to January 31, 2014, there were 1,828 visas issued to seasonal workers from Tonga. Australia has invested approximately $95 million in Tonga in the previous three years. In 2012-2013, Australia provided $31.1 million in developmental assistance to Tonga and it is anticipated that $31 million will be provided for 2013-2014. Through regional programs, Australia will also support Tonga to access regional scholarship, the Australia Pacific Technical College and support from regional institutions such as the University of the South Pacific. The University of the South Pacific has appointed Dr. Masaso Baunga as the Vice President for Regional Campuses and Properties and Facilities. Dr. Baunga was appointed to the post during the meeting of the Executive Committee on February 24th based on the recommendation by the Joint Committee of the University's Council Senate. According to information from the University of the South Pacific, a Tonga campus, upon being informed on this post, Dr. Baunga said he is pleased with this new post. At the same time, Dr. Baunga understands and welcomes the challenges and responsibilities with the new post. USB also reveals that this new appointment director, directed by the university's vice chancellor, Professor Rajesh Chandra, it aims at providing strong leadership, monitoring and quality planning of all branches of the university. Dr. Masaso Baunga began serving the University of the South Pacific in 2011 as a senior fellow in education financing in the Institute of Education, which is located at the USB Tonga campus. Dr. Baunga holds a PhD and master's in economics from the University of Daito Bunka in Tokyo, Japan, together with his Bachelor of Arts majoring in economics from the Western University of the United States. The other fees imposed by Tonga Power on its customers remain unchanged, although by tomorrow, the electricity tariff is expected to drop. This was confirmed from the Chief Executive Officer of Tonga Power, John Van Brink, in an exclusive interview with Radio Tonga News and Television Tonga News this morning. Here's Sin La Do with that report. John Van Brink says the new electricity tariff is calculated from factors such as the international price of crude oil. Therefore, it has no effect on the other fees imposed by the company on some of its services provided for its customers. Those fees don't change. Um, we won't be able to actually reduce the uh, disconnection fees until we get new technology in place. And we're looking at prepayment metering and smart metering, which we hope to get the board to approve in the next month or so. Uh, we put that into place. It'll actually reduce our disconnection fees at that stage. Right now, we are stuck with the costs of someone having to go up the ladder to disconnect premises, and that takes time. It's expensive. 
He also spoke of the successful operations of the solar farms, which contributes to reducing the country's reliance on imported fuels. Um, we've got a number of renewable projects that have been now completed and are running. <coughs> There's obviously the Mama Mai solar facility. There's also the government-owned one at Vavau, uh, plus our small wind turbines and small solars we put into place. But the combined effect of that is to save us about 75,000 litres of diesel every month. That goes into reducing the tariff and goes straight through to customers. Um, in addition, we've made quite a few efficiencies in the business, like reducing losses. If you add all those <coughs> generation and the losses gains together, um, it's probably worth over three, four cents per kilowatt hour. During the interview, Mr. Van Bryn confirms that the staff in Hawaii have completed all its operations to restore the island's electricity supply after it was wrecked from Tropical Cyclone Ian's devastating visit. For Television Talk News, I'm Sini Lato. Food supplies have been donated to the Deputy Prime Minister Sami Vaipulo this morning from A. County and Sons main suppliers in the region. The assistance is for the people in Hawaii who were affected from Tropical Cyclone Ian's devastating visit last month. For Nongave Koso with the details. Francis Cowley presenting the food items donation to the Deputy Prime Minister, Onobo Sami Waipulo. The donations are from the New Zealand Multinational Dairy Corporation, known as the Fonterra Group Limited, and the FMF Food Limited in Fiji. Speaking to Television Tonga News, the Sales and Marketing Officer of A. Cowley & Sons, Elone Tame Lau says, this is a big donation made by their two main suppliers. This is a huge donation. There are 500 cartons of cheese donated from the Fonterra Group Limited. 100 cartons of breakfast crackers and noodles were donated from the FMF Food Limited. The 500 cartons of cheese donated by the Fonterra Limited is estimated around 50,000 per anga. He adds there were reasons for providing these food items. The food items that we have presented today is suitable for consumption in times of disasters. Meanwhile, the director of the National Emergency Management Office, Levin Aho, says the assistance will be transported to Hapai next week. For Television Tonga News, I'm Fononga Vikoso. Traditional handicrafts, art and car carving items have brought income for many families in Tonga. A team of representatives from Tonga will take part in the Pasifika Festival, which will be held in New Zealand on March 8th and 9th. This morning, a mini trade show was held to showcase all the traditional made products that will be taken for this regional trade show. Attending this program was the Honorable Minister of Commerce, Tourism and Labor, Dr. Vidam Latu. The government is also paying for the team's air ticket to Auckland to join the show. Linda Afiliai reports. The Basvika Festival is an annual cultural trade show aimed at showcasing and promoting the uniqueness of different culture and cultural artifacts from all around the Pacific Island nation, Tonga included. Speaking to Television Tonga News, the National Coordinator of the Handicraft and Cultural Tourism Support Program, funded by the New Zealand government, but cooperates with the Tongan team, Mona Lisa Palu says, such program will benefit the livelihoods of Tongan. The most important things for Tongan taking part in this year's Pacifica Festival this year is to represent the Tongan governments. They are not representing themselves, but the kingdom as a whole. The Handicraft and Cultural Tourism Support Program funded by New Zealand government organized Tonga's participation in the festival and we have carried out training for these people. She adds that such opportunity will boost the knowledge of local handicraft makers in the market industry. Meanwhile, the president of the Tonga National Arts Handicraft Association, Sione Moungai Valu, says they are hoping to continue working together with the government in promoting this type of industry. The government's assistance to pay for our air tickets is encouraging us at the association to work hard. We have the capability to produce quality local handicraft products, but the problem we are facing is the financial difficulty. Also speaking to Television Tonga News, one participant, Soana Lepa, says she appreciates the opportunity. I would like to thank the governments for helping us in participating in this festival. In the past year, we pay for our own airfares and expenses. 
I would like to thank the National Coordinator for Handicraft and Cultural Support Program for all their help towards us. We earn our livings from selling out of handicrafts, which helps our family. The teams representing Tonga are from Outer Islands and Tonga Tapu as well. This is not the first time for Tonga to take part in the Pacifica Festival and it shows how effective the products from Tonga are being sold in the foreign market. Such program helps promote the handicraft which is another way of income for many families in the nation which help boost Tonga's economy. And one of the challenges facing young girls in Tonga is not being able to speak or share any bad experience that they have experienced in life to anyone in the society. The Tonga Girl Guides Association is stepping up its service for the public by bringing in young girls and local teachers for a special training which aims at encouraging young girls to share any unpleasant experiences in life. Anasil Falekaono with the details. Speaking to television, Tonga News, the Chief Commissioner of Tonga Girl Guides, Halaivalu Balu says they initiated the training to bring together teachers and young girls. The theme is Speak Up. <laughs> It is clear that parents, guidance and teachers need the skills and techniques of a Tonga Girl Guides in teaching and educating their children. We look after children when they reach five years of age. This is the target of our donor, the EU, and we really do appreciate such assistance. Meanwhile, one of the local teachers participating in the program, Losalina Dao for Oto Television, Tonga News, that this is a good program for teachers as they are the focal point at school. This program is very important in teaching us so many things about good manner of the children that we look after, guidelines for helping the youth of the nation, and such program help us a lot with our daily work. The Girl Guides Association are working together with the Tonga Red Cross Society, are working together to facilitate the program and it is funded by the European Union. And that's the local scene. Pacific is up next after this break. Stay watching. <laughs>